Hey y'all. Coach in the fight, you got the boys with me. Hey y'all. Hey y'all. And in today's video, we're gonna be learning how to learn the Hebrew using Psalms 119. It talks about the letters. We're gonna be talking about the letters in this video, but it also in that chapter gives us the opportunity to learn the words, learn Hebrew words themselves, how to use the how to use the letters and combinations to make and understand words, mostly to understand words since we're mainly just reading the text. Now, this right here is the screen that shows Psalms 119. And what we learn is that each word in Psalms 119, each verse, I should say, in Psalms 119 begins with the letter that that particular section is talking about. For instance, the first eight verses, each verse in Psalms uh, chapter 119 of the first eight verses starts with the letter Allah, or L, the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet. And from what we learn by doing this, by looking at these words and breaking them out, because these are obviously the words he wanted us to learn, to use, to learn Hebrew, we can see how these letters are used in Hebrew. Like for instance, you see right, most of these words are like also, you, then, and and, which are used in the first eight verses of the chapter which began with the L, or the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, some you call it the Aleph. Um, so then what you do, the way this works is you start putting two of them together, like you see this one here, which would be A and Fa. In English we would call that F. Well, when you think about it, you could think of words like affirmation, or affirmative and then it starts to make sense how F A Fa L Pehe is meant to say also so whenever we see that word even in the rest of the chapter you'll know that that word means also then you look at the next one you start to you start to put these together so you have the answers here you have the pictograph here of the word, which looks like ataha, ataha, and then you see the word means you. And so, only thing that's missing is the understanding in the middle. So you look at these words and then figure out how is it saying you and how is it connecting. Of course, having faith because this is coming straight out of the Strong's, um, because of that uh, program that uh, font that Christian worked on we was able to change these the Hebrew words right into the uh, pictographic symbols I'll show you what I mean right quick just to promote that uh, uh, video that he's working on but if I come over here and change my font to something else you see it jumps right back to the Hebrew but then when I put it in the alabayata, it puts it in the pictographs, which we can better understand. So in this form, you can't see a U in there at all. But in this form, I can at least see a human, and I can see the covenant, and then I can see our Father. So what we see is humanity, humanity and the covenant with our Father equals us, or you. A lot of times we see Aleph Tav in the Bible and we wonder what it means. It just simply means and. You see it in words like heaven and earth. It kind of means all encompassing. So with this we're able to learn Hebrew. The first thing we do is of course these are the letters. So, and in this class, you want to be able to uh, screen capture. You want to be able to take notes. You want to have your pencil and paper out. 
Now, so the first thing we do to learn this language, like I said, you want to be able to capture your screen because each when, when you see the screen like this showing the pictograph and how it came to its modern form, how the ELA became an A in English, you're, you're looking at the original name of the letter. For instance, if you go to Strong's number 410, you'll see the letter L, E-L, A-L, Al which is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, means God, Mighty One. And, um, uh, well, its definition is God and Mighty One, but its meaning is strength or um, Almighty. So, And so you get an understanding of the letter first. It's right here, um, this document, you can get it over at coachingandfight.shop, coachingandfight.shop in a form of a PDF. But with it, you can first of all get a understanding of the letter, including its background, um, how it's used, where it's used, its Greek word that's used for it. And then once you have it, using Psalms 119, we could then start to understand how these words are put together. Like for instance, how this word here means blessed. And it's real interesting when you look at the Strong's because what you'll find many times is that you'll go back to the word and you'll, for instance, you'll be looking for, let me see if I can pull it up over an example over here. This was the file I was working on. It got corrupted. It looked a little bit better, but I ended up losing it. But an example here of the owls, the letters that begin with L, you see that the L itself is Hebrew number 410 but the words that are given as an example are nowhere close to 410 Hebrew Strong's number 410 and if you actually click on one of these words like the word blessed you see yes it is Asha, Ashara Ashara I'll pull it up Ashara it's your Hebrew and it's important to, to point that out because the word Asara means to imprison. Ashara means blessed, while Asara means imprisoned. So that's why you have to be real careful with your, with your Hebrew. You could say the opposite by, by changing a letter. But anyway, so there are the L's, the letters in the first, set, first eight verses that help us to understand what the L is doing at the front of a word. Then let's look at the Baithas. A lot of people pronounce them Baith, but when you look at it, it's actually ba ya -ta. The importance to understanding that is that that's the covenant, it's a hand, and it's a house. And so that's really what it's about. But when you look at Strong's number 1004, you see that it's house, household, or temple, or a dwelling. Then when you come back to Psalms 119 and look at the verses, you see what this is doing with um, the words. Like, for instance, this word here is Ba-Maha. It says, with what? But when you go back to the Strong's and look for... That word, Bamaha, which according to Psalms 119 is with what? When you go back to look for that word in the Bible, you don't see the Bayadah at the beginning. You just see the last two letters. And it simply means Ma or what? So that's how we're learning this. You have the original word, which is what or how or why. It's like ma and Christian. I was talking. It's, it seems like where we get hmm from hmm is actually ma, and it means what? It's like a form of a question. But when you put the bayata at the beginning of it, it changes from being what to with what, because that's what the bayata is doing. Is it's 
saying in the thing like so for instance like here you see this word which is going to mean in the way badaraka badaraka means in the way well we've learned already that if we remove the biathol for the front of it then that word is just going to be the way and by by adding a biatha to it we end up with in the way and that's important to learn about the two first letters of the alphabet the Aleph biatha is that they're doing more to the word well we'll see more of that when we get to the yah let's let's go on to the gimel the thing about the gimel we'll notice that it does not do that let's go back and let's look here when we're looking at the biatha and we're looking at the letters that and the words that that's are in that are in the verse we see that biatha is strong number one zero zero four but the other words that are given us to help us to understand are words like 8193 64 and 90 which are way off somewhere that's because biatha is only adding to the root word well when we get down to the gemala we see that that's not the case strong's number 1580 but every word that's given to us is within about 50 so all of these words are actually going to be root words that begin with a gamalaur so now he's actually teaching us words whereas before he was teaching us what, what were those things up there prepositions and adjectives and interjections and pronouns and stuff like that now that we're getting down into gamala we're getting into verbs and nouns but again we can start to to understand these words so you ask yourself like i said you have the information here it has a hyphen on the end because when you look at the um hebrew it has that hyphen on the end but so the, the let's see what it is it is a try to remember my English. it is a verb gal is a verb with the letters gamala and lamet which means give well we didn't get let's go back and look i meant to give you guys a picture of all of these all right screenshot time uh well actually we're right here at the g there's the g the gamala the gamo which means to deal fully or adequately it has nothing to do with a camel. It's only represented by a foot, but it really means to recompense or to wean, to give. Generosity. And so that's why words like generosity come from. Gamel, giving, generosity. I tried to make something up yesterday. A, a gracious giver. Uh, I don't know. Anyway. Bunch of words to give is the, is uh, with the gamala. So then you come over here, so you have the foot, which is representing to deal or to give, and then you have to give a, a lesson, a lamed, a lameda, so that's to give a, a lesson, and like I said, you have, that's fact, and then you have it means to open, and so all that really is what you have to do is just put that together. How does that mean open? And then once you understand that, then you can go up to this one, uh, the word above it, which is, is only miss only difference is the mem in the middle so without the mem it means open but with the water in the middle it means to deal bountifully then another thing you see how you you could change you got right here you got gall versus gur as in stranger but you have uh Gamala Lamada means open, but Gamala Rasha means a stranger. Well, you see the stranger has this head here. But anyway, that's how this works. And step down through a, mo a more of these. I want to at least give you the screenshot to be able to get all of them. So next you have the Dalata, which is Strong's number 1817, means a door. And to help us to understand this door, Strong's number 119, it looks like it's verses number 25 all the way through 32. 
are words that begin with the dollar dot. So then you understand how these words how these words are helping you understand. So let's look back over here. We have it's coming from the word the, the letter is 1817, but most of the words to help us to understand are also in the 18s except this word down here which is coming from 1692 which means a cling so let's click on it uh, it's a d word too so what that tells us is that it's important to understand these d words not as um prepositions these are actually nouns we see over here even verbs over here dealing with the with the delta now one thing that i've learned is that we read these kind of backwards a little bit to, to get understanding you I'm not 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 read them backwards but you think about them backwards for instance I'm gonna pick one by random hopefully I won't embarrass myself but we have this one here which is Derek versus Derelay so you start off with uh, what I've been doing is starting off with the last letter in this word which is ka then ra then da so you have the hand then the man then the door is equal to a way so the hand and the man and the door so he's putting his hand on the door so if he's opening the door then he's on his way and then you look at the one above it it has the yod in it that's the only difference and it means my ways well what we're going to learn when we get to the yod is that yod adds possession to it so when you say baraka it means bless but when you say ya baraka it means bless you same with the head we're going to learn the ha wa -a. Let me go over and show you why I'm pronouncing it like that. Why it sounds like I'm trying to say Hawaii. Well, there's not an E on it, but it's a ha wa -a. It comes from Strong's number 1930. Hawa'a. So that's why when they sing the song, they say, A la ba da, Hey, way like that. It's so it's they that's actually two symbols. Gimmo dollar, gimmo dollar, hey, way, oh, highway means him, it means a them, it means her, it, that kind of thing. So when we're over here and we're looking at words, you see a lot of these words have possession in it. So this is how it's going to work. You're looking here at this word, which is teach me. But you already know from from what we're learning that the H is going to add a possession. Or maybe I haven't taught that. I've, I've been giving this class to a lot of people. But w you learn that this H adds possession. So this hook, this, this man, this seed, and this hand is going to mean teach. And simply by adding the head at the beginning, you go from teach to teach me. Like this one here, tet mean or tab. It's not tet. It's not teet. It's not clay. We're gonna find out. It's actually um, uh, goodness. So you have goodness connected to Hawaii. So that's goodness connected to man or goodness connected to humanity. Well, that's an incline. That's showing you that something is improving. The man is getting better. And each of these symbols. These pictographs is important. The shape is important. The direction that they're facing is important. Or the next one should be real easy to understand. How, how we're going to use Psalms 119 to learn a language is with the Y or the Y-Y. Because it simply means hook. And, and a lot of times it simply means and. Even when we're reading the Spanish language, they have what looks like a Y symbol is actually the Y symbol and it means and. So you even learning other languages when you see something, you know, um, I can't think of two Spanish words to put together. But anyway, when you see the the, the, the Y in the middle, you know, that's what it's mean is actually pointing to this hook way back here so when we get back to Psalms 119 verses 41 through 48 helps us to understand what this hook is doing 
There were your numbers for the Hawaii. Notice how they're all over the place. Well, for the hook, which is Y around 2053, we find that these letters are all over the place too. Next one to show you is the Zine. Zan. It's not Zane. It's Zan. Zan. Two letters. Zan. Nah. 2177 to tell you all about it. And looks like he wants us to really learn about it because all of the words are right there close to 2177 in that range. And y'all ignore this column over here when I show you this one over to the right on this page because this file is corrupt. That's so all the all them links got disjointed and messed it up. You have Zion here, Zan here, and so you're able to put together what it means. You have verbs, you have nouns, you have pronouns. You say how does Zat means this. That would be more like, yeah, Zath. Zath. Is it, so it's, the word is Zath. Because that's actually a, a um, vowel at the end. So it's Zath or Zath. 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 And this is the same word. So if you look, if you look at it, hmm. Did they, did they, did it, is it backwards? Let's pronounce it backwards. <laughs> Thaz, 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 this, this, they, they, it's backwards. This is the word for this backwards. Like I said, we're going to learn Hebrew from Psalms 119. Next up, oh, did I show y'all the design over here? what they look like and what's odd is there's your hook it actually looks like a hook when they try to show you the hook they try to say it looks like this but how are you going to hook something with that what you going to hook with it it looks like a broken hook don't it it's not it's the zion it means to feed to provide or sustain the next up is the chueth choth chawatha not the chat, definitely not the head. Chawata. Strong's number 2351, I'll explain that all to you. It means open, outside, street, place, abroad. Or oh, that's the definition of the meaning is to separate by a wall outside. So you understand when you see this, these words are going to have something to do with separation. Or something like that for us to understand but again all we do is go back to the root word let me show you them there's your chewitz words and they're all right there in the range 2300 you see chewitz words but now notice over here now in this column right here you should see it over in this too you see the I chose the what font did I choose the Algerian font because of how it highlighted the Latin, brought the Latin out. If I choose another font, watch this. If you choose like a font like you regularly used to, it changes it like that. So now you can't recognize anything. Arial, same way, it just looks like English. So I chose Algerian. And now it does all kinds of funny stuff. And you see where your Yiddish comes from when people say Asara or Asaraya instead of Asharaya. That funny looking S thing right there apparently means Sha instead of Sa. You say, well, how did I get this file? I went over, I used Excel and went to get data and I just got the data from the web. If you know how to use Excel. Um, there's a button up there that says data and then get data from the web and paste the web link in there and like I didn't plan on going through all of these so like I said hopefully you're screenshotting but the next letter up is the tab now I had trouble I had a lot of trouble with tab because they want to tell us that it's a tet or a tayet thing about a tit or tit tet is it points to mire or clay whereas a tab 
or Tawaba points to goodness. So if you don't have a proper understanding of what a tet is in a word, you thinking that it might be talking about mire or clay when he's really talking about goodness, which in a lot of cases could actually be opposite. So it's not a ta. I mean, it's not a tet. It's not a tet. So when a song says uh, het, tet, both of them is wrong. So the words foretold, we see is right there close. I mean, these are real tight words. Why? Because he wants us to understand that this is goodness. Like I said, we're learning this from Psalms 3. And it's not Psalms 3, actually. It's tuh Psalms, not puh Psalms. It's tuh Psalms. <sighs> anyway. So you have all of these good words when it comes to top. And again, so you put these together. You have a hook, you have a house hooked to goodness. That's a well. Or it's good. What if you have a water and a man hooked to goodness? Well, this is look like the water uh before the goodness. I I, I don't I, I haven't I haven't made it this far. I was really amazed with the uh, Allah or the El Ba and I say that intentionally I was real interested in the El Ba because when you reverse the El Ba the first two letters of the alphabet when you reverse them these two letters right here when you reverse them you don't say El Ba, you say ba el, ba el, ba el. That's what that means. They backwards. Worshippers of Baal are backwards. Anyway, all right. Looks like the next one up is the yad. Yad is a hand. It, it has an arm attached to it, but it's really a hand. And what it's talking about is like a hand. You think it's somebody giving you a hand. That's why it's the first letter in the textured grammaton, because he's reaching out to us. But notice it's not a hook. The difference between a hand and a hook is that the hand, that the uh, grip of the hand can be broken, just pull away hard enough, whereas the hook cannot. It has something that has to break first. So when you see words that have this in it, you'll see a lot of them has to do with possession. Your hands. And you look at the Strong's numbers that he's given us here, 30, 27 is the number, but then we're all the way up here at 7,200. Let's click on that. A reproach, they wag their heads. All right, so it's, uh, what? What did I click on? Yeah, link's broken. Anyway. We can try another one. 1961. Hi, ya, ha. Hi, ya, ha. Well, we see over here is obviously a different word. They got Yahaya over here, so it's backwards. Let's see, that's verse 76. Let's see. Yep, verse 76 right here. So look how that's backwards. I told you we're going to learn Hebrew. So when you look at verse 76, it points to Strong's number 1961, which they tell us here let's click on it is YHY that's YHY there but when we get over and look at Strong's for some reason is HYH so which one is it Yahaya or Hayaha well you can use the pictographs to figure it out watch this 
So it's either this. Yahai ya or is this ha ya ha which one looks right okay that was a little bit tricky and i didn't tell you that this class was going to teach you hebrew i ain't that when i didn't tell you at the beginning you was going to learn hebrew i said you're going to learn how to learn hebrew big difference Cause I've been on this for I've been on this for a while, and I learn something every minute, even in my sleep. <laughs> oh, right, the next one is the kafa, kaf, kafa. That's another one in the song when they say in the Alabay yet that song. It's not kaf ka, it's kafa, kafa, two syllables. You kafa, not you kaf ka. It makes it like it's, a child would think there's actually more syllables, more verb, more uh, um, um, letters because you got a cough and a ka. You've cough, ka. It's two different letters, but it's not. It's pronouncing the whole word like you cough. Ah. Oh, yeah, he helped me straighten that whole song out too. Anyway. We are looking at 3709, which means palm of the hand, hollow, also means the sole of the foot. So it's the sole of the foot or the palm of the hand. The words for kafa are given, are kind of close to 39, 3709. So you look at this word right here, call, means all, and it's... When you read it backwards, it's Lamet and Kafa. Learn and hand, like he has a lesson in hand. So, it's all. All right, speaking of lesson, the next one up is the Lameda. Screenshot, screenshot. Lameda is Strong's number 3925, and it means learn to teach, instruct. Its shape is a goad or a crook, but it's to goad or to teach. And you think about that, it's the exact same shape except the little period at the bottom as the question mark in English. So, are they trying to tell us something? <laughs> We're putting the, the, the symbol for the question mark as the same symbol for learning? I done gave up trying to decipher these online. So, they're showing them to you for the screenshot and we're all the way up to the mem. So now we see this word right here. We saw it earlier. It was with what? Because we saw Bamaha. Obama is with what? But now we see the word ma. Hum. Hmm. Somebody's backwards. And it means oh how. But it's any, that's how it's used in that verse. But remember, that's any kind of question. It could have been, oh, why? Or oh, where? Interrogative. So you have the Mayumim. Mayu, mayumim. It's water. Means water. It's defined as water. Means also juice, urine, or semen. Strong's number 4325. Oh, we didn't have the Lamet. We didn't show you the Lamet screenshot. There's the verses for, there's the uh, numbers for Lamet. They're all over the place. There's Mem 4325, and they look to be all over the place too. Like this one way back here, 1706. Let's click it. So they try to say it's Medibus. Medibus. That's because they put a Mem at the end of Debush. The bush, which means honey. So you put water and honey. You add water to honey. Let's see what you get. Again, we gotta have faith in what it says. You get sweeter, sweeter than honey. Now look down here. Up here again, you had how up here used in verse 59. It said, and verse 97, it said how, but the same word in verse 103 says. Uh, how oh how and how next one up is the seed representing 
life they knew him this means to propagate increase continue it's a verb uh, meaning to re-sprout propagate by shoots to be perpetual perpetual or continual so you learn when you see that see it means something is growing that's why it's at the end of Yahweh Shawan's name perpetual continual And we see the words over here. Let's go back and look at the numbers. 5125 and all of them are right there. 5125 except this one 7650. See what it's doing to that word. Nabasti. To swear or to take the path. Or take an oath. And it says uh, I have sworn. I have sworn. So it looked like it made it past tense. When you think about it, you know, an oath can never be broken. So it's one thing to be thinking about making an oath, you know. It's another thing to actually do it. It can't be broken, but you can't really take it back. So it continues. Next one is the Semic. For some reason I want to think it's a Samar, but I can't find the proof anymore. So we're going with Semic for now. So we can find the proof. Uh, Strong's number 5564 says Samek and looks like the verbs the words he wants us to learn are right there close look how close they are he wants us to learn that one for sure uphold hold and then you have at one point you have reject and then uh, hold and then you start looking at the, the differences in the letters find one that's close and compare them then look at this one we saw this one earlier with this tech with this top meaning incline earlier and so we see what it's doing to this word right up here Nechalathaya versus Nechalathaya and so you, what I've been doing is concentrating to figure out, okay, how is this, these two letters changing, changing this word to I have taken and heritage to I have inclined. That's the support. You can see how you get the S out of that. And if, you did, if they did not remove that center spine, it would be a dollar sign. It's real interesting. But it means to support or lean or uphold, rest. Strong's number 5564. The next one is the iron. Ayana. Strong's number 5869. It means I. Also means a fountain. But it's sight, appearance, spring, or fountain. It's a noun. And there's the ions. Now notice right here, we're looking over at this Latin, and it also has AL when the letters are ion lamet, not ale lamet. Now here, notice in this Greek right here is the capital for the A. Let's go back up and look up here just for funsies. Nope, same capital A in the A-lifts. So it's nouns and verbs all in that one. If we go look at the iron over here, Strong's number 5869, a lot of the verbs are, I mean, a lot of the words are right there close to it. Now you look down here, iron lament means upon. Iron thou means time, or it it is time. Go back up here, a left thou it means and but if you change the iron or change the a to a iron it means time or it is time the next one is the paha pehe open mouth and the reason why that symbol is shaped like that is because it's showing his mouth plus the uh his part of his esophagus too 
Like I said, all of the symbols are important. And you look how tight these numbers are, 6310. And so he's really telling us what Pehe is. Most of these are right there close to it. Nouns and verbs. Now look at this one. So you have mouth. And simply by putting the yod on there, it's my mouth. Now the next one is where I kind of started this. I was trying to understand this to say. And so this one is real interesting. It's real, um, like I said, this is where I started at. Because it's real easy to understand this one as you start shifting these letters around. Wish I'd have took a screenshot of the paper that I was writing on. That was in pencil. Here are the numbers. Uh, 6662. Let's take it at the number for righteous is 6662. And the thing about 6666 is, you know, that's... You wonder why that word ended up where it's at too. Matter of fact, there it is right there. 6666. Let's click on it. So it's actually kind of like the name Tzedek Yaha. Tzedek Yaha. And it means righteousness. There's your pay for the screenshot. Strong number 6110. There's your to say. Now, a lot of these symbols in here are what I found in the computer already. They were already in there. Um, and so you see that some of them are a little bit close. Like this is the symbol that was in the computer fonts already from the factory. And it looked like that for the to say. The Dele. The thing about the difference is, let me show you the difference. This one, to say, has his arms sticking up. The deleta is actually missing the door. The door part is actually this part that's down here. The door is missing, actually. That part is actually the door. The rest of it is like the house, part of the house and the walls. Um, like I said, every letter is important. And then the yard, it was okay. It kind of looks right a little bit and then you had this uh, uh, symbol here which I was trying to get it to kind of look like the Kodesha anyway so with the fonts that Chris should put on here we could actually see what it looks like we can see them so now you have the man the door has a door space kind of close together but and the Tao and the, the Tao all look like the right symbols. That's important to get the understanding too um, of the word. You can't really get a good understanding of the word when your symbols look like this. You, you can't see nothing. You can't see nothing at all. But when you do this, you see a whole story in these letters. You can imagine a, a, with a child's brain how easy it would be to figure this out. All right, so let's figure some of this out. Like I said, with this one, I was able to understand. So if you got your pencil or people, piece of paper out, it's like, why are you telling me to bring this out? All right, so here's a chance to use it. You look at the word is tzdikikwa. Tzdikikwa is the word is the is the name for the letter. So it's kwa ya. D Tista Tesdikikwa. So now that's the that's the root letter. That's the root word and it means righteous. Not righteousness. It means righteous. I just typed that into that cell. But it, oh, oh matter of fact, when you click on the strongs, let me help you a little bit. When you click on the strongs and you get back to Tesdikikwa, it means righteous, as in period. But when you look at this word here, it means righteousness. And you say, what's different? The difference is the yod. You don't have the yod in righteousness. It's because it's a judgment. There's a handle. Like I said earlier, you can pull yourself out of that righteousness. You can be more righteous today than you were yesterday. But when you have the yod in there, it's simply righteous, period. And to get those kind of clues, you really have to go to the Strong's number for these words and look those up. Um, and look at 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 little bit of differences. Okay, so you look at this one up here. This word right here is tzdar. We would call it a czar. And you think of all of the czar that the czar means 
trouble, troublemaker. If they say this is a border czar, it means they're putting somebody over to, to disrupt things. Maybe people crossing the border too much, you're going to put a border czar there to stop that. So a czar is an enemy. A czar is somebody that's there to make trouble. So then what if you take this border, this czar here, if you take the czar and in the middle add a yod and an iron. Well, now you're adding the hand of our father particularly with insight. So now this troublemaker given a hand and some insight becomes more like a disciple or a youth or a young person or somebody that's growing. And so that's what the way I've been able to put this stuff together. Um, like I said, this is where I started out looking at uh, these with the Tessaid. So another word was in here which meant commandment. Whereas this one is saying which you have commanded. The other one was in there was the word commandment or command. And the only difference in it was it was missing the yod. And so it looked like that. That's command. But that's you have commanded or your command. It's adding possession to the word. Next one up is the kadasha. Now, this one is one of the ones they're trying to hide from you. Many of the letters, some of the letters they're trying to hide, like Tab, Chuitz, uh, Hawa'a, um, to say, they're trying to say it's a guy on his side, but it's not his righteousness. And so you think that's almost opposite too. You got a guy who's standing up in righteousness versus a guy who's laying on his side in disgrace. But anyway... Kodesha is another one because the word itself means holiness or to consecrate, to sanctify. And so when you say the word cough, you're actually talking to an ape or talking about an ape. When you go to the concordance, it ain't even a real word. They just like wrote it in there. Cough means ape. <laughs> it don't even have a real number. But the real word that you're looking for is Kadasha. And so when you're singing a song, the last words in there, she says it twice. She says, Shin, Sin, Thou. And like I said, when you do that, you make a child or even most adults make you think that that's two different letters. But what she's doing is she's clipping off and she is it's not her, the original guy, whoever, you know, um, the song got lost. But in the original song, praise our father in heaven for this revelation, in the original song, Padasha was stretched out. So it's Samic Ayan Pei Hei Sadiq Kudesh Resh, Shin, Thou. Back it up and write it down. That's how it's supposed to be. Resh, Shin, Thou. You're clipping the, the Kudesha. And why? Because they want you to think it's a Kuf, a monkey, instead of Kudesha, which is sanctification or righteousness. They're hiding that one. Our Father wants us to know it because over here we see it's 6942, and all of the words correlated with it are within 200. Of that, so they're all going to be Q words or Kadasha words. Looks like a lot of cry out, cry here, raise, awake, near, of old. And so, again, what you have to do is go back to the root word and look at the root word and see how this is changing that word. How it's, you know, and that's how you'll learn the alphabet because then you'll know that anytime you see. Kodash in a in a word is talking about holiness or sanctification. So like we was talking about the uh, Tesaid earlier, this one is uh, Tesdikwa, Tesdikwa, and you see Kof, Delet, and Tesdikwa. So that's holiness leads to righteousness. That's why I say we've been I've been understanding a lot of these backwards. Hol or holiness or sanctification is the doorway or leads to is the entrance way to righteousness. There's a symbol. The symbol is actually like a um, moon setting or sun setting or equinox or something like that. And the thing about English, English actually tries to quote the Hebrew the most. You see how that Q is actually the same letter. You see, they're trying to get get us back to the Hebrew and the English. Like the Aleph looks like the A or the A looks like the Aleph. But this letter 6942 comes from uh, to consecrate, sanctify, set apart, to set apart, make holy. So when you see this, you know it's meaning to set, up, set apart, set something apart when you see this Kodesh. So that's why they want you to think it's a monkey. You know, 
you, you see that in your name, your name is Quentin. You start wondering if you are holy or righteous or a monkey. Anyway, the next one up is the Reyes. Reyes. Strong's number 7218, and we see the strong numbers are right there close as far as what was given in the, in the uh, verses. And his verse is about 153 through 160. You got the resh, which looks like a man here. And the thing about the symbolism, you can put the ayin in here. You can put the pehe in here. It's actually will come down. His stroke is the pehe. The thing about it, when you're looking at the picture, if you have a man here, and on one side, he has a mouth open of the vocab of the letters. His mouth is open, but then after the kodesh, after the Kodesh, he has his teeth. So he's going from having an open mouth to maybe talking or uh, in awe to his teeth are closed like he's smiling or gritting. So the difference being the Kodesh and the Tesede in the middle. These letters tell a whole story. Anyway, let's go. So they are the Reish. Letters, consider, plea, far, many, I see. And again, what you want to have is your Psalms 19 out. And so you're looking, and again, these are the first word in there. So you're looking for the word, what is that? Ra'ayata, yeah. But you're not going to see that. What you're going to see is the word, I see. And I bet you when you go back and look and try to click on it, well, it's going to drop the Y off because that's going to be the C part. I mean, that's going to be the I part. But anyway, we'll let you do that in your studies, guys. I'm showing you the screenshots and giving you the stuff. This is going to require some homework, obviously. The next letter up is the Shin. Shinnah, 8727. The words given are really pretty close to it. Its symbol is a tooth means kind of destruction or something going through the process of destruction like chewing the words given are all over the place you have peace keep hope seven times lying is that lying through your teeth so how do you get lying out of that man holiness destruction hmm so if the, his the man's holiness leads to destruction yeah that's lying that's that's a whole yeah, that's yeah I got that easy that's easy Shen Shen is to rejoice so teeth teeth is to rejoice I guess it's everybody smiling there's the Shen for the screenshot means tooth also means ivory or a cliff and so we're instructed that we're all supposed to learn the other languages um, Tibetan Chinese Sanskrit and Egyptian and I've been looking at those too and one of the things that I found is that this letter Sha in one of the languages maybe ancient Chinese was represented by mountains and I wasn't I was a little bit interested in it for lack of a better word because the mountains in the shape look just like the teeth right here and I'll say I started wondering okay there must be a relationship makes the same sound makes the same sound has a similar shape and then when we get back here and look at Strong's number 8127 that it also has to do something with a cliff so which reminds me of the mountain so the Chinese connected Sanskrit Tibetan Egyptian Hebrew are all fire letters anyway next up is the Tao call it the Tav sometimes gotta be careful with this one because Tav makes you a Tet instead of a Thav Tet is clay Dive is the mark or sign. So if you're not careful with your dialect, start saying tet instead of thou. You may be thinking about mire or clay instead of a uh, signature or mark. Now, the words corresponding for, to 80 are given to us to help us to learn 8220 are all over the place. See, 
five year, 50, 42, 30, 25. Let's look at this one to teach me. Tala Medini to teach me. And notice it said ta when it should have said tha. So it's Lamad, which is actually the letter. Learn to teach. So to put the thou at the beginning of it is saying for him to teach, you teach. No, no, no. I don't know what the thou is doing at the beginning of it. You teach me the covenant. Oh, the next word is probably going to be covenant. Something like that. Don't believe it? We'll try and see. Like I said, I got this from this website. I just used Excel to pull it down. And then use Christian's font to put the pictographs. Praise the Lord, Father in heaven. See, told you. Your statutes, you teach me. So that's what that covenant was doing in there. That's what that Tao was doing in Talamedaya. The Tao at the beginning was pointing to the covenant. So, see that? They might have even tried to hide that from us. Not with the Hebrew, you can't. The symbols tell you. That's a mark. This covenant is in there somewhere. All right, so here are the corresponding words. Let come. Let come. Now, some of these you got to click on now. You see these ones right here are so close. This one says let come and this one let says let come. But when you actually click on it, you're going to see what these words are doing different. All right. But I believe you guys have it by now. I think you got the idea how this works. How Psalm 19 was actually meant to teach us. So that's it. As far as how to learn the Hebrew using Psalms uh, 119. It's necessary that you have the pictographs. And what I would suggest is get the pictographs, well, get a pencil and a paper. You got the pictographs in your head and draw the words out um, close, similar words, similar. And then like if you have one word that just has the addition of uh, Kadasha in it and you look at how it changes the word. And if you do this for each letter, I believe at some point we get good at it. We keep practicing. We'll be able to recognize what each letter is doing to every word we see. You'll be able to, when people come up and tell you what their name is, you'd be able to hear the syllables and understand the, almost the personality of their name just by the sound that it makes. So go ahead and hit the like button, share this video. Um, Leave a comment in the other comment section if you got anything out of it. If any, if you learn anything or see anything extra we can do, um, keep being on us about getting it up. I know part of it is on the website already, but this what you're looking at right now. It's barely been saved at all. I need to go ahead and save, but and then we'll get it over to a PDF and get it online. If you got any feedback in the meantime, let me know. And I'll try to get it incorporated. Thank you guys for all you're doing. I really appreciate all you're doing. Thank you very much. Um, you guys are really helping out in this war in this fight it's definitely a fight but you guys are doing great as a support team and I really appreciate it and with that I'm going to say Shalom